The plating generator now comes with the ability to add modifiers to an object to create extruded panelling effects using existing faces. As well as fitting in with the rest of Blender's modifier stack, these modifiers are fast because they use geometry nodes behind the scenes. They also have animatable properties and can even be used as nodes within the geometry nodes framework as well. This video will give an overview of the modifiers and how to easily add them to your objects through the right click context menu. There are a few drawbacks to consider before we get started. Geometry nodes is still evolving, so the modifiers don't have as many features as the rest of the plating generator. Also, the panelling effects, like rectangular textures, require a rectangular shaped UV map. Otherwise, the panels either won't appear at all or simply won't look as good. Because of the rectangular extrusions it makes on the mesh, it is best if this mesh has quad-based topology, or in other words, is made up of 2x2 two two rectangular faces. Finally, whilst understanding geometry nodes isn't essential, a bit of familiarity can help you make the most of this new feature as well. If you have any issues or questions, never hesitate to contact me on info at configurate.net and a written documentation is linked in the description. Having said all that, let's get started. Here I have a basic source shape created by Uncharted Worlds. A link to their work is in the description. Let's set the display settings to have shadow and cavity turned on so we will see edges in a little more detail. If we tab into edit mode, this looks like a good mesh we can use on the plating generator. It has lots of nice quads and if we head on over to the UV editor, we can also see that the mesh's UV map is arranged in a square grid. The modifier works by projecting a rectangular pattern on the mesh, just like a texture would. So a rectangular UV map helps the generator extrude the right parts. I usually achieve this rectangular UV map using the UV squares add-on linked in the description. Also note, you don't need to throw away your existing UV map as Blender allows you to add multiple UV maps in the Object Data Properties tab. Going back to the sourcer, I'm going to be using one of Uncharted World's images as a reference. You can see in this image that there are areas of sparse panelling and areas where lots of panelling and greebles are being used. This creates a balance between areas of rest and intricate details in the mesh, which is a good design practice which we will be following here. First, I've selected parts of the saucer mesh and separated them into pieces using the P key. Even though the modifiers can use vertex groups to restrict selection, I found it best to separate the mesh out first, which you could then optionally weld back together afterwards. Once this is done, let's select the top part of the saucer first. In object mode, with the latest version of the add-on installed, right click the viewport and go to the plating generator menu. Along with the existing plating generator options, there is a new section called modifiers. This lists all the modifiers we can add with the plating generator. Let's add the panels modifier to this object. You should see that the modifier is automatically added to the object with the panelling effect applied. Let's go over to the modifiers tab to take a look. You should see that the panels modifier has been added to the object as well as a bevel modifier on top to highlight the panels. Expand the panelling modifier so we can see the options. The first parameter you'll probably want to play with is the seed parameter, which controls the random pattern being applied. Note that the pattern follows a similar large to intricate design pattern I mentioned earlier, with areas of rest and greater detail. The add-on has automatically assigned the active UV map to the modifier, which is being used to extrude the pattern. 
There are other parameters to try, such as the heights of the panels and adding randomness to these heights. Also, try adjusting the individual scale parameters to change the panel pattern proportions. On the panel bevel modifier, you can reduce the effect of the bevel a little. Each of the parameters have tooltips if you hover over them, but do get in touch if you have any questions. With this object set, let's move on to the next part. We'll add a similar panelling effect here and adjust some parameters until we get a nice effect. For the middle part, I want to add a different effect here with more intricate detail. First, I'll add a subdivision surface modifier and increase the number of levels to two in order to get more faces for the modifier to work with. Now, let's add the plating modifier, which contains a wider range of options. You can remove the panel bevel modifier that appears as it may interfere with the more intricate details we are about to introduce. Increasing the first two XY entries of the scale parameter will make the pattern smaller, giving us more intricate detail. With this modifier, we can adjust heights of the large, medium and smaller panels individually to get a more customizable effect. Use the recess parameter to move the panelling inward a little. Notice how fast the modifier works because it is using geometry nodes which is in turn using Blender's core functions. You can also change the X, Y, Z scale parameters individually to change the look of the pattern. Let's add some random objects on top with the Greeble modifier. Right click again for the plating generator menu and this time add the Greeble modifier. This will add a collection of random default shapes to the object but you can change the collection parameter on the modifier to your own collection of objects if you wish. Let's reduce the max scale parameter to about 0.005 and ramp up the density of the objects to about 100,000, which seems to work relatively fast as well because of geometry nodes. Perhaps this looks a little too busy and instead we only want to add greebles to the smaller panels instead. I've added some geometry nodes attributes that can help with this. Go to the selection parameter on the greebles modifier and click the small button at the end of the parameter which switches on attributes for this input box. Clicking on the box shows a drop down of all the attributes that were added by the plating modifier. Select the small panels attribute. Now the greeble objects are only added to the smaller panels, which gives a more subtle detailing effect. Let's add similar panelling detail to the other parts. Instead of repeating what we did, we can select these parts, then the top part we already added the panelling modifier to, and then next to the modifier entry in the drop-down box, we can select Copy to Selected. Do this also for the Panel Bevel modifier. This will copy the modifiers and all their settings to these other objects. We can then tweak the seed and scale parameters separately if we'd like to get different patterns with the same look and feel. You can do this with the other more detailed part copying each modifier over one at a time. Here, we're just about done with the object. Before I go, you can also add these modifiers as nodes inside geometry nodes as well. These node groups can be loaded into a Blender scene and then used in combination with any other nodes. In a new scene, go to the geometry nodes editing tab and add a geometry nodes modifier to the object. Click New to add a new Geometry Nodes tree to the modifier. In the Nodes Editor view, right-click and select Import Plating Generator Geometry Node Groups. This will import all Plating Generator node groups if they have not been added already. 
In the Nodes Editor view, press Shift-A and search for the phrase Modifier Nodes. You should see a list of plating generator related nodes for you to choose from. Please note any other node groups with similar names may be sub node groups and may be less useful in this instance. Once selected, you can then use the node in the same way as the modifier and combine them with other nodes to create different effects. Remember to add a UV map attribute to the node tree as well. Otherwise, you will not see anything change as there is not a UV map for the plating patterns to use. Then, let's change the subdivision levels and height deviation. You should see the geometry nodes take effect. And there we have it. I hope this is useful and let me know on info at configurate.net if you have any questions. Links for the plating generator add-on are in the description. And thanks for listening.